I am a massive dog fan, and with the amount of dogs available, I wanted to beat Pokemon Violet with only dog Pokemon. The challenge and the rules were requested by Dog of Source, but I wanted to make things even harder just to turn the heat up. Also, ladies and gentlemen, 97% of you are still not subscribed, so what are you doing? We just hit 5k. Let's go above and beyond for the next year, so hit that subscribe button, and without further ado, let's see how I get on. To start with the challenge, I customized my character. Yep, that will do. Can you tell um, I like purple? Well, out of the way, we can pick our starter, and our director keeps his starters in Premier Balls, so you know he's the real deal. Being the dog lover I am, I have no choice but to choose Springatito. Our rival, Nimona, will pick the week of typing, and because we're gonna have at least four Pokemon weak to her duck, this will give us a harder run. I don't even bother naming her. And in a quick 1v1 with Nimona, the grass cat hunts down the duck. Hmm, you two seem to be becoming fast friends. Mate, my cat ate her duck. On our way to school, we see something truly amazing. A doggy! Hound or? This will be perfect to start our- You twat. I was forced to sacrifice my sandwich in order for him to help me get back up. And needless to say, he did not help in the slightest, scaring even more puppies away and eventually stealing me when I could catch my Doberman Pinscher. That's the last time I ever give a stranger my lunch. Eventually, we escape the caves and battle this boy, Arvin. That's what you get for stealing my berries too. Nevertheless, we press on to Lost Platos, where finally, my dog-owning dreams came true. We instantly caught the Fido, and being the Beagle Dashhound Cross, I called him Max. Fair, 2v1, really? We managed to take her duck, but out comes her paw me. And oh my god, it's wearing a light bulb as a hat. Well, it's not coming home today then. Fortunately, the game lets us press on, even if we lose to our rival. And upon stepping foot into Metzagoza, we encountered the ignorance of Team Stars, which went well. Nimona gave us the Terror Orb, but as I mentioned, no terrestrializing to make this run more challenging. Oh my god, the Eevee bag! He's so fluffy, I'm gonna die! The next few days were uneventful, running about with schoolwork and getting ganged up by each and everyone asking for favours. Except maybe you. But at long last, our independent study begins. Yeah. Let me become champion instead. So we don't overlevel, our first stop is at the Bug Gym in Cortondo, and the gym test is honestly really fun. I actually really want to jump on a 2v2 on Olive Ball. This clears us to beat what should be the easiest gym in the Polia region, but I've had easier runs before. It's a 3v1, so this is really not going to go my way. Needless to say, bugs can't do much, right? Right? Well, COVID does manage to take down Katie's Nimble and Tarantula as we resist bug types, but she has a teddy bear? That's illegal, surely. Oh, it's got a bug hat too! One Fury swipes instantly takes us down. So after getting to the level cap and learning Fire Fang, this time was a lot easier. Taking down Nimble in two, Tarantula nibbles but goes down in two, and we managed to flinch Teddy Ursa as well, meaning it can only lay one Fury Cutter on us before we break its hat. With one match out the way, we can now go and get our second dog. It took us some time, but we finally found the Houndor that our brute doesn't go and steal. I call her Lucy, and start making our way east towards the first Titan. However, there's a problem. The newest edition is already overleveled, so Manx will have to continue on his own. And let me tell you, Titans are no joke. He didn't take me down in one or two, but a whopping six times. So I have a plan. I know Fido's special attack isn't great, but Mudshot is super effective, does more damage than my physical moves, and lowers its speed, so we can move quicker. This had to work. We managed to spam Mud Shots activating Anger Shell. As long as it doesn't use Vice Grip, we're good. It goes for Rock Smash, thankfully, so one more and he runs to his den. Kill them all! Arvin catches up and joins in the fight. Being already weakened from the last fight as I didn't heal, Cloth takes us down with Vice Grip. But thankfully, Arvin spams Water Gun and it finally falls. So we got lucky there. 
to celebrate a nice pick. Oh, Doi! That's mine! Oh, I can't be good for you, surely. But good it was, and the ride on can now run quicker. And in no time at all, we arrive at Artisan, home of the grass gym. I can bring Lucy on board as well. Welcome to the dog squad. Paw Patrol, Paw Patrol. This gym test requires us to play hide and seek with the Sunflora. But myself and my brother already did that and was so much better. Do check that out as that was super fun to make. But after finding them all, we step forward to Brassius, the leader of grass types. This is going to be easier now. Two embers take down the petalil, Smoliv tackles us to the floor, but burning it to a crisp wasn't an issue. His ace, Sudorudo, comes up and puts on his flower hat? Looks heavy. He uses Trailblaze to boost its speed and then swiftly takes us out with Rock Throw. Thankfully, Max is bulky enough and one more... Oh, really? We barely live on one HP and connect one more Fire Fang, winning us our second badge. Now we can go and get our next dog. I go back west past Court Hondo and catch a female Rockruff called Scarlet. The name choice will make sense later on. We continue to take on trainers and buff up along the way. And in no time at all, we become food for the Sky Titan throwing boulders at us. Maraidon helped us out here, dodging or weaving to get face to face. Scarlet hits hard with two rock throws, but Bombardier returns to sender and we go down. Lucy also falls, but not without hitting a big Thunderfang. So once again, it's up to Max to finish it off with a super effective play rough, making it run to its den. Arvin checks up and gives us a helping hand. Ah, oh, better late than never, I guess. It went more towards Arvin's Pokemon in the second phase, so we were clear to take it down. Mate, you better not nick this- Ah! Why? I haven't eaten since I went on study leave. But it's worth it as we can now surf and Arvin comes clean. He's also helping the dog recover. You know, we might become the best dog trainers here. But it's now time to take on the first of the Team Star members. And taking out the guards was no difficult task. But it works like this. If you send 30 Pokemon to the moon in 10 minutes, the big boss comes out and punch you. Simple enough. In no time at all, the big boss, Giagomo, comes out with his pawners, and oh my god, that looks worse than my first car. Anyways, the pawn goes down to one incinerate. And really, we're fighting a car? You know, you can always run us over if you didn't like us. And that's what exactly happened to Lucy. Thankfully, Scarlet simply knocks it down with an easy tackle, and boom goes its engine. We learn more about Team Star about their operations 18 months ago, but I'm not interested. Give me the badge. You're in trouble, sunshine. <laughs> Upon surfing to get to our next destination, LaVincia, and gain an awesome ground move for my Scarlet, Nimona wants a warm-up battle before the next gym battle. She also sends out her Rock Ruff, but Trailblaze is good enough to take her down and boost our speed. Poor me was a one-shot with Stomping Tantrum, but Quaxwell is on a different level. To rationalizes and sweeps Scarlet, Max, and Lucy, thus making me a loser at life. Sad times, but again, we can proceed as normal. This gym involves taking part in streams and, uh oh, the head teacher's here too. I've not been going to class. Nevertheless, we press on playing hide and seek with the director. This helps the streamer get some new subs and, wait. You're gonna give me part of that 5k? As you expect, I am hopeless as ever and lose quite easily to Iono. I need some move swaps. During that time, Lucy evolved to Houndoom. Hour after hour, loss after loss. I was starting to lose hope until this run happened. Watchroll sparks us, which has a 30% chance of paralyzing and gets taken out by Rock Tomb. Spark has been my biggest issue. I then spam Stomping Tantrum on Bellabolt until we fall to a powered up Spark. Lucy comes and takes it out with Incinerate. Luxio is next and Intimidate proves useless as we hit two mud shots. Again, we tank a spark. Miss Magius is last and swaps her witch hat for a light bulb, but goes for Confuse Ray. Another foul play hits and we barely hang on after a charge beam, but we hit another foul play, which then she finally takes us down. Max once again saves the run with own tempo, giving us a free turn to hit play rough. That was insanely difficult, but with that marks our third badge, and our fourth dog slot. Our next stop was at Team Star's Fire Crew base, but I wanted something who can spice things up. My favorite Pokemon dog, Growlithe. Not a lot of people know it's based on a Japanese Akita Inu slash Tiger. 
I called him Ember, and a Firestone later evolves him to Arcanine. I want to sweep with Ember, so I take the time to get him to level and EV train up, making the most out of its element nature. While I do that, now is the time where I invite you into my Discord, where you can join in with trading and battles on all Pokemon games, and also get involved with the community. The link is down below. Max also involved to Dashbim. Oh wait, I was supposed to rename it Doggo Sauce. In my defense, I've not finished the decks on my own save. For this run, I will continue to refer to him as Max to avoid confusion. But with that out of the way, Team Star was an easy sweep, and I mean, literally. That was easy. What did I just do? Don't worry about it. And now you can see why I call the Scarlet. It resembles a red husky. But onwards to the easiest, and probably my favorite Titan of them all. BE MY FRIEND! I WANNA LOVE YOU! It's just so cute, honestly. Lucy made incredibly easy work out of Orphworm with Incinerate. He quickly hides in his hole and makes a run. No escaping me, boy! Within literally seconds, the lurking Steel Titan was no more. So with that, it's time for a sandwich, which again, Moran on steals. But no worries, as we made extra this time. So I actually have something to eat. But with its powers regaining little by little, off to our next gym and this one i'm worried about do you see the major weakness in our team yep water but upon arriving at cascarafa the gym leader seems to be scared of two fire dogs and runs away but all is well when we caught up to him in the local market with his wallet although to be fair i would have ran away with 50k that's my treasure in this adventure but nope i had to bid it all on hoeing seaweed surely not for 50k Oh well, at least I have five grand spare. And with the chef happy, it's time to take him on. And I had a little bit of confidence here. I send out Lucy to deal with the loser. It has a high physical attack, so one foul play leaves it on one HP. We hold on after Aqua Cutter, but take it down on the next turn. Wug Trio outspeeds, however, and our pincher falls. But now it's time for Max and hit hard with a super effective Thunder Fang, which leaves Rabo Mibnable. It terrestrializes and Crab Hammer punts us to the moon. So my Ember remains. And, well, falls to another Crab Hammer. But our second attempt is a lot smoother, with the loser using Pluck instead. Lucy tanking two water pulses and hits one foul play, but hits itself to sleep. Max takes it down with another Thunder Fang and survives one Crab Hammer to hit two more Fangs. Once he falls, Ember is able to finish it swiftly. I'd say we got lucky there. After securing our fourth badge, it's time to venture across deserts, mines, and in cold climates to find a female Grievard, our second new regional dog. It's based on a Briard, but as it's a ghost dog, I settled on the name Luna. But being overleveled, it needs to remain in the box. So we press on into the forest to take down the third team star boss, Atticus, the poison user. He starts with Scum Tank, and I send Scarlet out. It hits us with Toxic, but after two Stomping Tantrums, the Skunk falls. When Reverune comes out, I switch to Lucy and go for Mud Shot to reduce its speed. It retaliates with Bulldoze, so we're still quicker for foul play. Up next is Muck, so I switch back to Scarlet and take down the Tar Monster in two. <laughs> All that remains is the car. I safely switch to Lucy and resisting a flame charge. I set a sunny day and a noxious talk finishes Lucy. So it's up to Ember to hit hard with Flare Blitz. We take a lot of recoil damage, but it tries another flame charge. So our flash fire kicks in and means we can finish it off. With the boss now retired, we cross the Glacido path and make our way into Medali, home of the Treasury Eatery. I don't know about you, but I'm getting hungry. Along the way, Luna evolved to Houndstone. Yes, I will have uh, medium rice balls. Can I have that well done season with lemon? Congrats, you pass. Wait, what? No, I'm just a customer. With no luck, it's time we go against Larry and his Kamala is up first. So I send out Scarlet. It hits a sucker punch, but we retaliate with counter to easily take it out. But Larry, the meme he is, finishes off with the dunce pass. <laughs> All is well, though, as Luna body presses the snake. With no time at all, Larry steps up a notch and terrestrializes his Staraptor. But we pull through and get him in the red with body press. Once he's down, Ember is to the rescue and hits one crunch to win us the fifth badge. 
Oh no, you cannot do this to me, Nimona. This is not fair. But she did, and her now evolved Quaxwell made a mockery out of my team. Playing Dance Dance Revolution and beating my entire team in the natural Spanish showers. She took my money, but we were able to press on for our next dog, Mastiff. In those Intimidate, which could come in handy, and being a Mastiff, I named him Sumo. I also gave it EXP candy and evolved it to my boss diff. Sumo, attack! <laughs> it was a difficult climb, but we eventually arrived at the next gym in Monte Navira. Oh no, I'm not gonna be dealing with chavs, do I? Luckily, no. But regardless, Ember and Sumo made quick work out of the trainers until- Oh, um, Miss Rhyme, I've, I've done my homework. Yeah. Yo, I'm not your teacher, boy. Better get down and let me wipe you off the floor. <laughs> I mean, that was charming, so my two dogs made quick work against Mimikyu and Bennett. Or maybe three. Her final Pokemon were Houndstone and Toxtricity. And at this point, she was cranking up the volume. But two Pokemon were no issue to take it down, and Houndstone later was put down to rest. We were finally starting to catch up in the gyms. At this point, we had got all the dogs in Pokemon Violet, with two exceptions. One, Lycanroc's other forms, which I didn't really want to use after having Scarlet. The other one is one of my favourites, Riolu. I could have caught a Lucario in the North Province, but I decided against it and went with the more common Riolu. Being based on an Egyptian Farah and Jackal, I called it Horus. And make haste to our next location, the desert. We have to take down our next Titan, Iron Shreds, being a future Pokemon from Donphan. However, it was easy to deal with. A couple of fire fangs making him flee. Luckily for us, as he heals, Arvin gives us a hand and brings out his Scovillain. But it's nice and easy for us to still take it down on our own. Ooh, sandwich time. I swear, you are one annoying dog. Oh my god, dogs do fly! Hoas and I set out on a walk towards Alphanada, battling trainers and going through the caves. And he evolved to Lucario once his happiness was fully raised. Oh, I have so many memories with that one book as a child. But enough of that. It was time for another warm-up with Nimona. And this time around, I still cannot touch Daisy the Duck. I can see why Nimona is a champion. But thankfully, we can still continue with our mission. To take on the Psychic Gym Leader. But first, a cheeky little Zumba session. And oh my god, how big do your eyebrows have to be? Once again, this gym was a walk in the park. Ember taking down for Ridgeraf with Crunch, and we barely hung on after a psychic, but two Firefangs finished Gardevoir. We nearly Oko the Ostrich, but it stands, taking out our Ember. Lucy comes out to finish it with foul play. All that remains is Florgus, but nothing is stopping my dark dog. We are victorious after another foul play, and the seventh badge is ours. We have to push up the mountain once more, and neighboring Monte Nivira was the ice type gym, just by a ski slope. To be honest, this is my favorite gym thus far, as I enjoy the ski test, but also I have two fire types, a rock type, and a dual fight and steel type, so this should be a cake in the park. Ember makes a quick sweep over frost moths, being quadruple weak to fire, but better take holds on after another fire fang and also has really good coverage. Earthquake and a swift Aqua Jet takes down Ember. I retaliate with Max, and one more Fire Fang takes it out. So Titan is up, and being a physical bulk, I'm having zero luck. So I switch to Lucy, where Flamethrower does a big chunk, but Liquidation takes Lucy out. Luna comes out and also hits hard with a Body Crest, but it barely stands, so one more causes him to faint. His last Pokemon is Altaria. It terrestrializes and tanks a Body Crest, Oh my god, finally some luck! It wasn't a last as another hurricane takes us out, but Max finishes Altaria with Fire Fang. With all eight gym badges acquired, we can take on the league, but we still have a couple of jobs to do first. We still have one Titan to deal with in the lake, and Team Star to also tackle. So we make our way down to the most northern part to deal with the fairy boss, Ortega. He starts with a Zoomarrel, so Max is first, and a few Thunder Fangs take it down but we took a beat him with play rough. Wigglytuff is up, and while we play a little rough, it plays too rough with my dog, and Max is down. Thankfully, my Horus now knows Flash Cannon, and having the highest special attack and stab, it takes it down in one. 
and his dashman in one as well. All that's left is his car to break for parts. We tank a steel roller and one flash cannon nearly takes it by half, but magical talk knocks us out. I switch to Ember and chip away with Firefang. We get confused and the stupid dog hurts himself. Eventually, we get to the red, but one spin out takes us down. The good news is he's slower, so we outspeed. Don't you even think about it. Let's go, Scarlet. One down, one to go. But not just yet. Our next destination was Kasaroe Lake, home of the false Dragon Titan. It's either a dragon or a not. Oh my god, this Lucario set is a little OP. Oh, little fishy! Whoa, don't eat the little guy! Fish are friends, not food. To save Nemo, Max was to the rescue, paralyzing with Thunderfang before going down to a body press. I didn't have much coverage, so Ember with Thunderfang did enough damage to... Hey, give us Nemo! We chase after him. I'm not letting him get away. Arvin is late once again, and between Green and Max, we finally take the Titan down. Nemo! Oh, you're the Titan. Down you go, little fishy. At long last, the final herb of Mystica is found, which means lunchtime. My boss Stiv feels a lot better now and even wants to play fetch. But there's no time for that as we have to go to the final base of Team Star. Eri is the boss of fighting types, which means a lot of my team are going to struggle. But nevertheless, we press on, defeating 30 karate belt holders in just 3 minutes. And we can now push to send them to the moon. Thankfully, it was much easier. Toxic Rope going down to a simple sidekick from Horus. And Persimium barely holds. However, a close combat takes us out. Ember comes out and it's Fiery Fangs to take the monkey out. Her dead piggy is up and one critical play rough is an easy sweep. No, Horus, I thought you were on my side. But luckily, it isn't as strong as mine, so I knew it was the imposter. All that remains is her car. So play rough does decent damage, but the problem is her car has stamina. So physical attacks don't hurt as much. Max comes out and tanks a spin out. It slows down harshly so we can play rough twice before finally... Oh yes, go on boy! We get it in the red, but high horsepower was too much. So it's all up to Luna and Phantom Force finally takes it down. With everyone defeated, it's time to hunt down the big boss of Team Star. And there's a problem. We have to wait until night to take on the big boss. So while we wait, we take on the Pokemon League, which now involves a job interview. What? And I thought the Elite Four was bad enough. But within no time at all, we pass and took on Rika, who specializes in ground type Pokemon. I send out Scarlet against Wishcash and hit a four times super effective Trailblaze to boost my speed. Although tanking a big hit from Earth Power, we take it out. Don Fireman's next, and we hit one more Trailblaze before Earthquake finishes us off. Up next is Horus, and we hit a super effective Water Pulse and confuse him, but he pulls through and finishes our dog off. Max is next, and Iron Head hits hard, but Play Rough finally takes him down. He sends out Camera up next, so we stay in and chip with Psychic Fangs, but we also make use of our ability, Well Baked Body, raising our defense. However, Flash Cannon changes my plans, so we fall. Lunas was next, and a dig took it out with ease. The trio was also easy, as I opted for two body presses, taking it down. His ace, Clodzire, is last and terrestrializes, so we go for our stab, Phantom Force, and we finally tank and take it out. With one out of the way, it's time we bully a kid, who has some scary steel types. But thankfully, Lucy took out Copperager with two flamethrowers after Stealth Rock was in place, then I went for two foul plays on our Bronzong to take care of its heatproof ability, but not without tanking an Earthquake. Her Corvid Knight is up next, which was an easy Oko, and her Magnet Zone just barely holds before Lucy forced her Discharge, but thankfully Ember still bites the Magnet to a crisp. Her Tinkerton terrestrializes, but we bite, and luckily she flinches, so she couldn't even touch my dog, so this was an easy sweep. With Poppy out the way, up next was- OH MY GOD IT'S LARRY! No wonder why you were so easy the first round. Luckily, his Tropius was no big threat as two Ice Fangs and a flinch was enough to take it out untouched. But Staraptor is back and intimidates our dog, which isn't ideal. So I made the choice to send out Scarlet instead, who can tank Brave Bird, although he hits a close combat, which isn't ideal. But I can now hit hard with Ember's Thunderfang. Oricorio is next 
and I haven't got any coverage. So Ember eats the bird well done with a couple of fire fangs. But now his Altaria is out, so my best option is Horus and Ice Punch, being 4 times super effective. It goes down after getting hit by Flamethrower, but his Flamigo is where things get tricky, taking out Horus and the Luna with a Terrestrialized Brave Bird. But Ember once again hits hard with a Thunder Fang. Oh no, I promise you I got an A in art, but you never turned up to class. Well, there's, um, homeschool? He didn't like that and hits my max with a Super Fang. But thankfully, we survive and two Ice Fangs take Noivern out. I switched to Horus where he sends out Draglage, as I was expecting Sludge Bomb. So a free switch to hit hard with Ice Punch and down he goes. Flapple's out next and we get huge damage, but Dragon Rush does finish off Horus. So Ember is out to outspeed and finish with Crunch. Haxorus is up and we hit hard with Play Rough. But with a Rock Tomb affecting our speed, it outspeeds on the next turn and takes us out. So Lucy with Shadow Ball takes it out. His pseudo, Baxcalibur, terrestrializes, but I hit with his physical attack and foul play. But being bulky, it tanks and Glide Rush takes us out. But thankfully, Max saves the day once again and a play rough passes the assessment. No! But there's one more trainer we need to take on, the champion. Although she's probably the easiest opponent out of everyone here. Our Lucy retaliates against Esparfa with two Shadow Balls taking it down. Avalog is next, so we hit hard with a single Flamethrower. But King Gambit comes out and tanks another Flamethrower, so Stone Edge finishes Lucy. Horus is up next and finishes the chess piece with a singular Aura Sphere. Her Go Goat is up. And we hit a nice punch, which freezes, so we take it down on a second punch. Freeze. But the loser is up, so with no counter, it's time to switch to Luna and tank a liquidation. A super effective Phantom Force almost takes it out, but Aqua Jet finishes us off. So I sent Ember to finish with a simple crunch. Her last Pokemon is Glimora and terrestrializes to a rock type. We may hit hard with Play Rough, but her Terra Blast takes us out instantly. Horus comes out and tanks an Earth Power, so we lay the final blow with Aura Sphere. And there we have it. We have beaten the champion and become a champion ourselves. Oh, you thought we were done? <laughs> now, we still have some undercover work, but upon returning to school and helping Arvin with his Pokemon, he wants to battle with his just recover Mabostiff. But he's insistent and thus Horus takes down Greedent with a simple Aura Sphere. Scovillain comes out and I try to hit the 10% freeze, but we don't and Fire Blast takes us down. So Scarlet with Rock Slide retaliates. His Toad Scroll is up next and I go for the switch to Max as it knows Ice Fang. We barely hold on after a Sludge Bomb and thankfully knock it down. Next is his Gar... Gar How do you say that? Anyways, it takes us out so we swap to Luna who knows Dig. Thankfully, it doesn't go for Earthquake, which could have ended his battle for us, but a body press later finishes it off. It's close to next, so we chip away with Phantom Force until it takes down with Liquidation. Scarlet retaliates with a Rock Slide, so all that's left is my boss diff, and I hope that it's a better build than mine. It terrestrializes to Dark Type, so I switch to Ember to tank Crunch. With just 4 HP and a player of only doing half, it thankfully misses, so one more secures the win. On the way back to school, we bump into Clive. But little did I know he was in fact Director Clavel. Oh wait, your face really gave it away, sir. But why? My quiff was perfect. Anyways, he tells a fib and wastes my time stating he's the leader of Team Star. So, we sweep his team instead. Oranguru was nice and easy, but Gyarados is a danger to a lot of my team. We foul play and his Aqua Tail misses, so another one takes it down. Why did you bother knowing I have two fire types? Holty guys is up and we exchange the shadow ball until it falls. And the Moongus is easy to cook. However, there's a problem. Where's the lamb sauce? With one Pokemon left, he sends out Skilleridge and takes out Lucy. But Scarlet's Rock Slide is enough to tank out the singing croc. Now stop breaking the rules and let me look for the imposter. But it turns out it was Penny all this time. The girl that got picked on at the very beginning of the run. She uses a team of evolutions, so Horus sorts out my mascot with two Aura Spheres, and she sends out Flareon. So we switch out to Scarlet and tank a Flare Blitz. Rock Slide finishes it off. Next is Vaporeon, who reduces my attack as I buff my speed. So I hit hard with a few Trailblazers as it misses Hydra Pump, but does eventually make contact and take us out. 
So Horus with Aura Sphere took it down. Her Jolteon is next and hits hard with Thunder, which does finish off Horus. Luna is up and her attack gets lowered, meaning Dick isn't as good as what it could be. But it kept missing Thunder, so we hit again until the bot falls. Leafeon is next and all we can do is chip away until our attack got too low. So we make the switch to Lucy, who tanks the Leaf Blade and one flamethrower takes it out. Hooray, Sylveon is up, and we switch out to Ember, who can tank the Moonlight. A couple of Fire Fangs dent, but her cute charm got the better, and we eventually fall. Max, however, takes it down with a simple play rough. With Team Star, well, actually back together, and also in a lot of trouble, we sleep for the night before our final fight. Nimona organized the battle for us in the Metsagoza city center to see who is the better champion. Her Lycan Rock starts as per usual, but Self Rock gets set up and a single Aura Sphere takes it out. Her poor Mott somehow outspeeds and close combat takes us out. With Scarlet being weak to all of her team, I sacrifice her to drop poor Mott's defense, so Ember can hit hard with Play Rough. Orthworm is out, so a quick switch to Lucy lets us Oko with Flamethrower, but the Stones and Earthquake have done quite a lot of damage. When Guja comes out, we hit hard with foul play before Muddy Water takes out Lucy. Ember comes back out and once again, play rough was too much for Gudra. Delon Sparse is next, so I switch to Luna to eventually take it down with Body Press. This duck clearly is making a fool out of himself for what I'm going to do. Wild Charge still wasn't enough to take it out, so we fall. No, God! Max tanks Aqua Step and Play Rough has beaten her. It's over. All the deeds were done and there was some tension in the air before applause broke. But we still have one last job we need to do. And that is help Arvin to find his dad, Professor Toro. So with the friends we met along the way, Penny and Nimona joined us into the Great Crater for a rescue mission, disabling all the locks to open the door to his time machine and beating Paradox Pokemon along the way. I don't know about you, but you seem awfully fishy. Yeah, I'm a robot. Wait, what? He's dead. Ah! I don't want to die! But we had to press on. I am off against Scarlet. It hits the discharge, but Stone Edge hits harder and it goes down. Ion Thorns is next, and we almost finish it off with Stomping Tantrum, but Earthquake takes us out. Horus outspeeds, however, and Aura Sphere finishes it off. Iron Juggerless is next, so we switch to Max, who can take it out easily, but gets hurt along the way. Iron Hands is one tough cookie, tanking a super effective player off, and Thunder Punch finishes off Max. Horus is back out, and Sidekick does major damage to destroy the robot. Iron Bundle was the same story. Iron Valorant and its booster energy is dangerous, a simple brick break knocking us out. Luna tanks a spirit break as we chip away with a critical phantom force, but it eventually gets too much and Luna gets put to rest. I finish it off with Ember's swift flare blitz and it finally falls. And with that, we have conquered all of Paldia in Pokemon Violet with dog Pokemon. It wasn't easy, but we did it. Thank you all very much for watching. Have a lovely Christmas and I'll see you all in the next video. Bye bye.